This week's episode of the Ask Masters podcast is being brought to you by the Watershape Society. Welcome into the show today. On today's episode of the Ask Masters podcast, I have the distinct honor of sitting down with Genesis co-founder Skip Phillips. We discuss how he got into the business, how he created the Genesis organization, which has transformed the entire pool industry, and where he's at right now. Stay tuned to this very special broadcast. Hello, and welcome to the Ask the Masters podcast. This podcast is dedicated to discussions about the design and construction of water shapes. The hosts of the show are all certified SWD masters who represent the leading builders and designers within the water shaping industry today. Welcome to the show today. My name is Dave Penton from Fluid Dynamics Pool and Spa, and it is uh, I, I'm I'm really enjoying doing this podcast because I get to bring on and talk to my mentors and and just people that I've looked up for my whole life. So I want to welcome in Skip Phillips from Questar Pools, who uh, has been one of the most influential men in my life and my development and my career. And and so thank you for agreeing to be on the show today, Skip. I'm really honored. Well, that's kind accolades. Uh, You probably remember that uh, publicly uh, I've stated that uh, I believe Dave Pinton and people like him are the future of this industry. So uh, that's uh, that's very kind for you to say that. Well, we would not be here without you and and uh, what you what you started. We'll get into that in a little bit. But tell uh, uh, tell people a little bit about who you are, Questar Pools, um, uh, kind of a little bit of your background and where you came from, how you got involved in the pool industry. Well, I started out making precision measuring tapes for uh, turbines, and it was a company my grandfather had founded in 1944. And my father, who was a uh, electronics calibration technician on the Atlas Missile Guidance Systems. So when I was growing up uh, in high school, uh, what I was making were, were these measuring tapes. And uh, the one day he came to me and he asked me if I could go clean my grandmother's pool. Hmm. And we lived on a property. My grandparents lived in one lot. Uh, we lived on another, and then the little house that the tool company was in was in another. And I went and I did it, and I didn't blow anything up, but I had ter- definitely didn't have any idea what I was doing. But it turned out he had purchased a service company. Uh, this was 1975. And he asked me if I would like to uh, be involved in that service company. Hmm. Well, uh, there was a couple of reasons why I took him up on that. One is being in a 68-degree room breathing lacquer thinner versus... Uh, driving around in cutoffs in a little pickup truck, uh, I, I opted for the uh, pickup truck. Plus, my little brother was uh, was actually mechanically was was probably genius level at 13 years old to rebuild an automatic transmission by looking at a manual. There aren't wow. that many 13 year olds that can do that. So so I was geared more for uh, you know being able to get involved in the service company, which by 1979 had grown to doing 1,100 pools a week on pool service. Uh, we had three retail stores and I decided I wanted to build pools. Hmm. And I remember him saying, uh, well, don't you have to know something about that? And I said, <laughs> well, uh, apparently not. <laughs> because based on what I see, I imagine that you can um, design a pool with absolutely no background in design. You can build it with no relevant information as far as the soils or what would be relevant to the structure. Uh, Mechanically, there's no relevance between the components and the job description and and the compatibility of those items. And once you're done with that, they actually will give you an award for that. And he he laughed. He goes, you're kidding. I said, no, I didn't make that up. And and frankly, it's still a little true today. Yeah. So so anyway, I uh, I was able to get involved in that and and we've received uh, uh, certainly some success, you know, in that process. And um, but um, now today, uh, I now own that tool company again hmm. uh, after all these years. So, uh, but my passion has always been uh, pools. So one of the things that um, has come up time and time again on these podcasts is that. Um, I came up similar to you through the service vein, and uh, and and I really feel like service guys make great pool guys because 
we see uh, all of the mistakes and we know all of the problems and, and all of the bad things that we've seen other builders do. And so, you know, it's interesting to see that you, you've come up and, and, and that as well. Um, how early on did you, or, or did you early on really jump into the design side or how did you kind of morph from a service guy into construction and then ultimately design, which is all you do now? Well, it just seemed to me that that, that was a, um, a path that I wanted to take. And often, like we're talking now, we talk about moving up. I'm not so certain that in most cases, designing and building pools is moving up. There's mm. nothing wrong with being a, a well-qualified uh, service person. No, we can't do, we can't, our pools can't remain beautiful without them. So, yeah. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, they probably have a lot more impact on whether the people are happy with uh, the purchase of one of these vessels or not. So um, I think the, the difference probably between uh, the people that are in Genesis that, that went through the service industry and have chosen a path in, in design is one, they were willing to acknowledge what they don't know. And, and second, you, you have to be able to operate on both sides of the brain to, to be good at that. And, and there's, there's people that are on the design side that have a very lofty opinion of, of themselves and what they turn out. And uh, then you have people on the mechanical side that, that are completely ingrained in that. But I think that the people that, especially at the master level in Genesis, uh, regardless of the path they took, I think that to a degree, all of them have that capability. They, they all have the ability to work on both sides of the brain. And I, I don't think that's that common. Yeah, so let me, uh, for those people that are listening that may not know, um, uh, let's get into a little bit of what Genesis and SWD is. And, and so, um, you know, w when was that? Uh, so early on, Genesis Genesis started as Genesis 3, uh, and it was kind of the the brainchild of, of yourself and David Tisherman and Brian Van Bauer. Uh, and it was really birthed out of a kind of a frustration with the industry. You know, you, you alluded to it, you know, when you started building pools, there was no place to go. There was no place to where you could go learn how to do a pool right. That's all changed and, and really uh, it, it wasn't influenced by you. It was the three of you really fundamentally changed the entire metric of an industry single-handedly. So kind of uh, explain that a little bit and, and how that all came about. Sure. Well, I designed and built my f first pool in 1979. So by 1999, 20 years later, uh, in spite of being involved in trade associations and attending classes and all that, uh, there was there was no valid um, information on design and construction of pools. I think I can safely say that. Uh, so that frustration uh, came out in a meeting that Brian and I were in, uh, where we made the statement that since the trade association wasn't going to do it, we would do it ourselves. And uh, David had been involved in a meeting prior to that where we'd created Genesis, but we really didn't know what it was going to be. So at that point, what it was going to be is, is we were challenged to do a school. So we thought, okay, we'll do a school. And uh, everybody said it would fail. Nobody would come, especially the kind of money it was going to cost to have great food and great wine and be in a great hotel. I mean, for us, this initially, it was just a one one shot deal. So um, but it sold out and we had the uh, the curriculum and the location done. And I think it was 90 days. Wow. Um, and we chartered a plane to go up to uh, the Central Coast to make sure we had the right location. And we did the, the class, and I remember um, at the very beginning, we, we were pretty nervous. Um, and uh, Gene Brown's dad, uh, mm. you know, Gene. Yeah. Uh, Gene Brown's dad was one of our first students. Oh, wow. And so he walks into the lobby of the uh, Inn at Morro Bay, and he says, are you the Genesis guys? <laughs> and... Uh, and we said yes, and he goes, "Well, this had better be good." Oh wow! He no goes, pressure. <laughs> he goes, because you only think this is expensive because right then the Canadian dollar was, uh, or the loony was, uh, was pretty far upside down against the U.S. dollar, and um, so that was a challenge. I almost felt like leaving, you know, right then. 
but but we did the class and and um, we returned back to our individual offices on Sunday and my office was kind of the home base for Genesis at that time and uh, I think there was 22 students if I remember right and I believe 20 of them called on Monday wow. and said, what are we doing next? And I said, what's this we stuff? What do you mean we? And they go, well, you started it. Mm-hmm. And so that that's how that started is, is that um, from, from my perspective, I didn't have the strong educational uh, background that David had and, and neither did Brian. So having some of these topics that we saw value in, but not necessarily knowing how to structure it, was immensely helpful. Now, obviously, over the years, uh, it's it's changed dramatically and dramatically expanded, and now has a third party or ISET approval, which is the only design and construction school in the world for pools and spas that has that designation. The only the only other education in the industry that has third party is the foundation's uh, educational system for service. Yeah, and that's uh, that's really critical, and and it's one of the things that I love too is that. Um, you know, uh, our classes are all rated for CEUs, um, and uh, you know, it, it, and it, it's it's crossing industry lines as well. You know, landscape architects can come take a Genesis class and and learn and get their CEUs uh, for that. Um, so um, let's expand a little bit. So Genesis three was was birthed at um, uh, in in Morro Bay uh, all those years ago, uh, and then it's grown to the place where now it, we it's referred to as Genesis University, and and uh, it's it's grown into there's a uh, uh, hundred and fifty hours that students have to complete uh, in order to be uh, a graduate of Genesis University, but. Um, one of the things that is intriguing is we're we're teaching pool guys, uh, but of that 150 hours, really probably only about 30 hours is how a pool gets built and where does the rebar go and what you know how do you place plumbing within a concrete structure. So, where's the other 120 hours? What what else are you teaching there and and why? What was the philosophy behind all of the other classes? Well, there's there's really only three parts of a pool. Uh, so there's the design side, proportion, color, rhythm, balance, texture. Uh, there's the uh, mechanical side, which obviously is the the pumps, the line sizing, the compatibility of the mechanical components. And then there's the structural element uh, where the concrete and uh, steel reinforcement, that combination is based on the conditions that it happens to be residing on. So. Uh, it, that would be the bearing capacity or lack thereof of the soil, or certainly a lot of us, you included, are doing things in the air. So, you know, the, the, there's a, a lot of moving parts in that. But the industry considered itself to be knowledgeable on the construction end, even though at the end of our classes, it was common for people in the first half day, the cockiest pool builders in the country, or really North America, would be outside on their phones telling their offices, don't dig another pool, don't put any more steel in, don't put another stick of plumbing on until I got home. And that was common. It, it still it was, is to this day. It, we still see that. It absolutely is. So, so our focus has been that we can lay out the fundamentals of, uh, of how this vessel needs to be built, but it's a package deal. If, if you have a well-designed structure and, and a solid mechanical system, but it's ugly, that's hardly a success. And the industry's habit of uh, taking credit for things they didn't do, like the design side, hmm. instead of acknowledging where that came from, uh, has perpetuated the myth that the pool industry in general is, is uh, able to participate at that level. Now, the segment that Genesis is involved in can. The majority of it cannot. So the parallel industry that Genesis has created, um, you know, which is maybe I don't know, ten percent probably, of uh, of the people in in this industry, um, that's that's the part that's going to lead the way on expectations of what these vessels should look like and how they work. Yeah, and so one of the things um, that we've kind of tried to clarify internally the last number of years is is uh, the Genesis wing and Genesis is the the um, 
education wing. Um, and then when you graduate from, you know, you've completed that, uh, then you're eligible to join the Society of Watershape Designers. Uh, and so all of the SWD members are all graduates of the uh, of the Genesis University program. Uh, but I want to get back and, and really understand um, you know, the, the, the core classes, um, there's classes on color theory, there's classes on elements of design and uh, where we learn balance and line and, and at um, drawing classes uh, where we learn perspective drawing and, and, and how to sketch in the field. Um, you know, and then you obviously have your hydraulics and your construction schools, but, but why are you bringing in these other elements? What was the, um, why are they such a part of the core of the Genesis education? education about design and, and all of that side? Because that's the part that's left out. Um, so we, we have a tendency in Genesis to focus on, on the concrete medium. But, but that isn't all there is. There's stainless, there's fiberglass, there's vinyl liners. And when you think about it, if you're going to have an educational system that has validity to an entire um, st structure, the, the pool and spa industry structure, uh, you have to recognize that that good design or valid design isn't about what you're making the vessel out of. It's actually about how to place that uh, those components and how to organize them. And that skill set is absolutely valid regardless of what what uh, what medium you choose to use uh, for the vessel. So so not everybody has seen it that way. Uh, as you know, even our 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 basic construction school, um, you know, People will will look at that particular uh, uh, system, and then think, "Well, I already know that." Sure. Well, the fact is, you don't. <laughs> you just don't. And and every time, and I've I probably have attended more uh, Genesis classes than most. Um, but what a blessing! You know, I get to go to school uh, with with some of the best instructors and best teachers, and and we have them both inside and outside the industry. Uh, but the uh, the philosophical change in this industry is is that we're not interested really in excluding anybody. Sure. Uh, so I, I think you're going to see the next shift is really going to be that that the other parts of the market uh, that are doing these vessels will will see it's a top down world. You know, so uh, they'll see these 200, 300, 400 thousand dollar projects and realize there's a lot of elements in there they can apply to maybe a more economical uh, application. And when you think about it, what's missing right now in the pool industry after 08, uh, the middle market and the mm -hmm. bottom, you know, that's what dropped out. And so they'll be able to fill that gap. Sure. Um, one of the things that as I went through the Genesis organization and got my uh, degree and all of that was just... Um, I'm not a designer. I'm not. Uh, I'm not creative. Don't I, sell yourself short. I can. I can, I. I think I bring design elements, uh, but the the holistic. Uh, integration of different elements uh, is not my strength. Um, I, I love being part of a design team and being able to offer insights in that. Um, but one of the, the the greatest benefits that I have found um, through my Genesis education has just been the the understanding that have that has grown in me for um, working with an architect, understanding the language of architecture, understanding why you know this wall has to be here and why you know why moving it three quarters of an inch is going to make something uh, you know it could change the entire design dynamic and um, you know that's that's one of the things. Um, you can go to class and you can you can disperse information and all of that. But, um, you know, y you guys have taught a mutual respect for uh, design and 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 for for other people that do have the design uh, creativity. Um, you know, you're teaching fundamentals of good design within this program for pool builders. And I think that's that's one of the biggest differentiators as well. You know, there are other um programs out there that can teach you how to bend a piece of rebar and how to glue a pipe. Uh, but that does not take into the account, the, the holistic environment that we work within. I think you see that a lot in designs where, you know, you'll have, um, you know, you'll have a cohesive design in the backyard and then you'll have this pool stuck in the middle that, 
you know, maybe a more of a traditional type of a backyard and then this black perimeter overflow vessel that's super contemporary that just doesn't fit. Um, and and being able to learn that why that doesn't fit uh, has been really beneficial to my maturation. Well, I, I've worked with uh, a significant number of the masters, yourself included. And uh, one of the things that I think is absolutely consistent is confidence. And confidence comes from the security of, of uh, having the educational background and knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are. But keep in mind what you perceive to be a weakness on the broad spectrum isn't a weakness hmm. at all. You know, you may have a bias towards the execution. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. But, uh, but when, when you're in a meeting, and, and we've been in them before, uh, and I'm thinking of s several of our uh, folks that, that I've been in meetings, uh, there's a consistency there. And, and there is that, not arrogance, there's a confidence that all of them exude and a respect for the people on the team. And, and that really sets a completely different uh, playing field than what typically happens where the pool guy is simply brought in to be the low bidder on somebody else's idea. You don't have the intellectual property uh, to be able to participate at any other level. And and frankly, the industry proves that because they don't have the ability to charge for their, their time. So, sure. you know, obviously if you're working with, with design professionals that are really good at what they do, they don't do that for free. So uh, I, I, I think that creating that venue for the, for this industry uh, we're, we're proud of that. But, if, if you look at the difference between Genesis now and when we made the last big change, which was, I think, 2012, um, I, I really, I'd have to, I'd have to say that uh, the leadership, it was always looked at is that it was Brian and David and I, and then it was uh, Brian and I. Uh, but the difference is now is that the leadership in Genesis is very deep. It's, it's vertical and it's horizontal and you, and it's by design. I mean, you pull Brian and I out of the picture, this, this thing doesn't change much. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's plenty of leadership, there's plenty of smart people. And that was really what we were looking for in the, in the long game. You know, that's really what we're looking for. Yeah. And it's really, um, you know, I, I think that's one of the, the myths a little bit that, um, as I've been the, the, the chair of the board this year, um, the advisory board. Um, one of the things that I'm really trying to uh, portray is is just that, and to kind of flatten out the structures. And and um, uh, there is a bit of a perception that that Genesis and SWD that that we only build multi million dollar pools. And I really want to kind of um, shoot that down, and that that this education is relevant. Uh, across industry lines, you 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 talked about that earlier. Um, you know, um, one of the things that I like to say is that um, yes, you know, if if you're building in the Midwest, um, you know, you're probably not going to do a million dollar pool in the bid bust. You might, uh, but but the bulk of the pools are going to be more you know traditional. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't be the best at who you are, and, and so. Um, you know, it, it's you learn the principles, and the principles are the principles. You know, you can build a forty thousand dollar pool really, really well, uh, just as well as you can build, you know, a four hundred thousand dollar or four million dollar pool. You know, the principles are the same, and so you know, uh, all of the SWD members, no matter what their price point is, um, have proven to be the best and in, in the, the best in their class within their market. And, and that's, a, that's something I'm really working to try and, um, you know, get that message out there that the SWD is not just all about, you know, multi-million dollar projects. Yeah. And, and that's, that's been a bit of a, a, a hurdle, I think, because uh, looking back when we worked with Kirk Sullivan on uh, his program on fiberglass pools in Florida, um, where, you know, they were tr the people that went there were trying to figure out why do you bring in these three arrogant uh Good night, guys, to talk to us about pools when we sell fiberglass. The same thing was true in uh, in Germany with uh, uh, Guido and uh, and uh, the Riviera team, where they brought us in to to teach uh, to a, a fiberglass firm. But but good good design and uh, knowledge knowledge of the, of the product 
uh, is so rare in, in this industry that, that it gives us the ability to transcend whatever those, uh, whatever the vehicle happens to be for the water. And what's unfortunate though, is that let's say that you have an idea and, uh, or a component or a certain way of doing things. And then we're an industry full of uh, chameleons, you know, so, so they take that idea and they knock it off and not understanding why you did it in the, in the right. first place, finishing edges and, and perimeter overflows are a great example of that or fireballs, <laughs> probably even more, but there, there's a reason why you do it. Now we can debate the reason maybe, but you don't arbitrarily do it. Right. And I learned that in, in working in a company that does aerospace, you don't arbitrarily do anything. You have a very specific reason. Now we can debate the reason if you like, uh, but, but you don't just start throwing things at it and hope it sticks. And, and that's what this industry has been about for a very long time. Yeah, I remember uh, one of my early teachers, Mark Holden, um, he talked about that, uh, that, that so much of the industry, they, they pull a book off the shelf and they open up, and, oh, that's a cool thing. Let me bolt it on right here. You know, and you, you end up with these components that, um, that, that aren't actually relevant to each other. And it's, it's just a, it's a haphazard design. You know, it's, it just is designed by whatever the cool device of the day is out there. Yeah, those are tools. You know, the, the design details are tools. The components are, are tools. Uh, education is a tool. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we're, we're, we're probably offended at people that want to use education as a club uh, on, on others. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a tool. And, and when you think about it, we're, we're proud of what we've achieved within our educational system. But probably the three most influential uh, architects in, in U.S. history um, would be uh, Mies van der Rohe, who was from the Bauhaus, and uh, Thomas Jefferson did the uh, Monticello and, and the University of Virginia, and certainly Frank Lloyd Wright, and none of them had a degree. Right. Okay, and most people don't know that. So so the, the very people that are trying to use the education as a club on others, some of the most influential people in, in, that have ever walked in North America, uh, were were talented and they they were educated. They may not have had a formal education, but they were most definitely educated. Sure. Um, talk a little bit. Uh, so your your firm, um, you know, you've been through the construction, um, and then your firm moved into uh, you know, strictly design quite a few years ago. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about the design process and and how um, you know so many architects? I I get plans all the time uh, that say pull by others, um, and and I think a lot of that is just a reaction against the pool industry because we we have not presented ourselves very well and and they don't uh, you know I, I wonder do they not want to spend the time really developing something because they know it's just going to get screwed up in the in the process and so um talk about you know uh, at, at, it's almost seems like a misnomer with the in, within the industry to talk about a pool design professional. Um, you know, it, it's so rare, and and we're really trying to to change the optics of that, and 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 bring to light the fact that there are design professionals who who have a historic understanding of design styles and architectural styles, and that um, you know, and you've been you've been living in that environment for quite a while now. Well. I think the pool industry wants to market itself into credibility. And the fact is you earn it. And and it's not about what you say about you, it's about what others say about you. And and so uh, that has been a fatal flaw of the marketing in this industry. And then if you can't qualify to, to play in an arena, mm -hmm. then you just create a smaller bowl and make up your accolades and you gift everybody. I mean, the industry has been very good at false accolades and uh, we haven't done that. And you brought up uh, Pools by Owner. If you recall, Brian Van Bauer said he was gonna name his firm uh, <laughs> Pools by Owner because he'd be specced on every job. Right. And that was pretty funny. Uh, but Brian is actually the one that shamed me into uh, charging for design back in the early 90s. I, uh, he he says, you know, your stuff looks okay. Why don't you why don't you charge for it? And I I was in the mar same market as everybody else. You know, no nobody did that. Mm -hmm. um, but I chose to to do that. And then after a couple of failures, it took off. And and then I don't know th how long has it been? 13, 14 years ago, I guess. Uh, we'd had a lot of experience and success designing and building. 
and we did a lot of designs that we didn't build on an international level. But I had a couple of health issues and, and the doctor suggested, you know, well, maybe you should just do, um, you know, design work. And, um, and, and I said, yeah, I, I can do that. And he goes, well, I wouldn't do it immediately. And I said, why not? And he goes, because I want you to come over to the house and check out my, <laughs> my project. But, but anyway, I, I, I had the meeting with, with him and his wife and, and gave him some ideas. But I, I never built another project after that. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and wh how often do you work with architects in that? And, and um, what, do you, what do you feel as the, as the, the, the co-founder of Genesis and, and SWD and that? What, talk to the architects out there because you understand their language. You've worked with them for decades. Talk to them about why they should look for an SWD member uh, to, to join the design team. And, um, you know, uh, when they should bring them in, you know, that's that's one of the things I think that we get brought in too late sometimes. And, and so expand on that. Well, nobody knows everything. And uh, I mean, if you if you're on a team with an architect, they, they earn their place, you know, and, and typically they're at the leading edge. There'll be times where you'll be on a small team uh, that's been generated by the homeowner. But in our world, typically the, the team is much bigger than that. And I, I think I just blogged something just recently about um, somebody that's that's part of a team, and it doesn't matter what kind of team it is, uh, your goal is to make the whole team look good, not just you. Uh, we, we have the benefit of getting a lot of external accolades for a long period of time. So so we, we, we take we market off that, but more importantly is that I'm able to market off the people that are within the Genesis system. Most people cannot do that within a system. You know, they may they may stand out a little bit, but then if they're in a part of a big group, generally they're being drugged down <laughs> by the group, and and you're hesitant to say, "Oh, I belong to this group," because you know they don't they don't have any credibility, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But that we don't have that problem, and and the real blessing of Genesis is that is that what we do, we're going to do it collectively, and and uh, and I'm very proud of being a part of not. not Granted, I was I was a co-founder, but I'm, what I'm proudest of is to continue to be involved in a group of people that are so instrumental in completely fundamentally changing an entire industry. That I'm proud of. Yeah, yeah. And and what I have found uh, when an architect does bring us in early, um, you know, we can. Um, I've said it, listeners have heard this a number of times. It's my job. I feel it's my job as a contractor to bring your design to life or to bring the architect's design to life. And, um, you know, sometimes that's that's difficult. And sometimes there are restraints within the site. And the earlier that an SWD member can become a part of the whole design process, the, the, more, the more likely it is that the architect's vision is going to be able to be brought to life as the architect envisions it, you know. So oftentimes we're brought in too late and, you know, restraints of the site have already been placed and we're having to dumb down the design or modify the design or tweak it because we can no longer, you know, get the pipes in or, you know, the, the just just overall constraints of the site. And so, um, you know, I really I, I really think that the best projects that we've been on have been when we're involved in the design process before a shovel ever even hits the ground. Well, being a consultant early on uh, is is a much different role than being a pool salesman, because uh, as a consultant, you're you're not uh, you don't have that economic skin in the game at that point. So you can be objective. You can throw out ideas, and if it ends up being expensive or not, you're you're throwing out options, and you can promote the pros and cons of those options. So uh, th there's some there's some merit, and then if it turns out that you end up getting chosen to build the pool, which is what would happen to us probably a significant portion of the time. Sure. Um, then, then that's the way that that goes. But, but, but if you're truly objective, uh, I think that uh, the world doesn't need any more ugly pools that don't work. So uh, maybe the merit of being able to participate maybe is more lofty than, than your direct economic benefit of possibly building this project. If you're successful, 
in educating the consumer and the rest of the team so that that vessel turns out better and it ends up not being an albatross around the, the pool industry's neck, uh, then I would consider that a success. Yeah, and I, I, I want to expand on your what you just said too in that, um, you know, uh, an ugly vessel that doesn't work, but, um, you know, I happen to be on, you know, on, on some trophy projects uh, and, and I get to see a lot of them in LA, some of the most, you know, prestigious properties that have been constructed. And I can't tell you how many times that I come in afterwards and I see a beautiful vessel that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, you know, as, as a guy that loves to figure out how to make them work uh, that's almost just as frustrating for me and and i gotta think for the the architect that designed that that's really you know it, it's it's got to be super disheartening to see you know this thing that is only a fraction of what it could have been but but that was almost by design of the process so if if you're only going to send out a vessel to bid so to speak sure and you only included a third of the information what do you expect yeah. You know, so you're looking for the low bidder on a on a cosmetic footprint. And the most important parts of ensuring long term viability are the mechanical and the structural. And you left both of those out. And and somehow you imagine that there's going to be equitable proposals. That's a pipe dream. I, yeah. I mean, that's not going to work anywhere on the planet. So w somehow we have to um, get over that hurdle that all people in the industry are created equal. They're not. Yep. Uh, and and that may be not politically correct, but I can tell you for sure they're not. And and the people that are within our Genesis system are historically the people that want to do good work and they're willing to spend the time and the effort to be educated to do it and be a valid part of a team, whether it's on the design or consulting side or the execution side. And, and I think that uh, if I was a a landscape architect, architect, interior decorator, um, homeowner, whatever that looks like, um, that's that's that tool is necessary if you're considering doing a vessel in a home. I don't care what the price is. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just it's 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 nice to be around like-minded individuals. You know, one of the things that that you set up early on um, within the organizational structure was just integrity and, um, you know, uh, people can go on the website and learn about kind of our position papers and that. And, uh, you know, but but just knowing that all of the people that have been through this and, and um, you know, that have graduated is these people are committed to the same ethical practices and we have minimum standards that are way above industry standards. Um, you know, the, the pool industry standards are, um, you know, they we're, we're trying to raise the bar there because they don't meet uh, oftentimes with international building standards and, and even, you know, American Concrete Institute and things like that. And so, uh, but we as the Genesis and SWD organization have created the 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 minimum levels that we will um that, that that we must build to and we hold each other accountable we have you know we have a vetting process to bring everybody into membership uh and and we have a process of of moving people out of membership if they're not remaining consistent with with the values that you have set up all these years ago well it's easy to raise the bar if it's laying in the dirt so uh this this concept that um that there's standards as as a veteran of well over 300 civil state and federal cases as a expert witness um it isn't that at all it's as bad as it can be and still be defensible that's hardly a standard that you would achieve to 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 be at and in our system our white papers our, our our position papers are based on facts and it's also based on facts as generated by groups like the ACI. To do anything other than that is irresponsible. Sure, It's detrimental to this industry, it's detrimental to uh, the client, and it feeds the litigation system. So any, any group or any individual that perpetuates this nonsense that uh, somehow uh, Genesis, their minimum standards are something that are to be dismissed, this is just basic good building practices. If you're willing to undermine that, you're part of the problem. Sure. 
And and the fact that we hold our members accountable to that, you yeah. know, and that, um, you know, we have done investigations and we have moved people out of the organization. We don't we don't keep people in the organization. Uh, and, and we do that with a with a consumer mindset in mind in that, you know, if if a, if an architect or if a homeowner or somebody as they're seeking out, um, you know, who's going to build the pool, uh, they can come to the the Society of Watershape Designers and, and search who the database of people in their local area. And they know, you know, we can give them the confidence that they know that that these builders are, are committed to excellence and 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 are continually held accountable to that. Well, I, I think I would probably use the term uh, that that what we want to be and what we wish there was more of is principled leadership. And, and I, and I'd say that transcends just being the pool and spa industry. That's business, that's politics. That's, you know, what, what, what the, what the world wants is principled leadership, whether you're the head of your family or uh, whatever that looks like. And, and I think that we own that, you know, we, we, not that we don't want everybody else to participate, but somebody has to lead that. Somebody has to stand up and say, this is who we are. And, and you know, when you when you look at like politics as, as an example, when people get together and they go, well, we got to, you know, hedge this or move this around or we got to degrade our expectations there. Uh, Genesis didn't do that. No, never we has. did not change that. We it doesn't matter whether uh, we were on our own or with the foundation or now the new organization that's been merged. Uh, we've never done that. It's it, and that is not going to happen. Yep. Yeah. It's it's a it's it's a pleasure to be within that because I know that all of my contemporaries and my peers um, hold those same values. So um, yeah, this has been you know just so uh, I, I learned things today that I didn't even know about the history of Genesis and and uh, and so thank you so much for being here today and and. Uh, you know, just a personal thank you to you for for changing the industry and and for creating a system uh, that someone like me can come in and learn and 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 um, you know raise my own self up and and be able to um, grow and mature into uh, where where I find myself today. I, I I can't tell you enough. Thank you for what Genesis has done to me. Well, thank you. Uh, but I would I would tell you that it was just as likely that three arrogant pool guys were going to be sitting in Morro Bay by themselves having good wine and good food <laughs> because there was there was always that likelihood that that was going to be a, a bust. So the the success of Genesis is you. So and 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 all the people that are in this system because we've got thousands of people in this educational funnel and you don't change an industry just by yourself that that message has to resonate and it has to be maintained for a long period of time and uh and it's done it and and the reason it's so successful now is because of the success of the people in it and uh and and you're a great example of that well, thank you for, so much for for being on the show today and and um and and for changing the industry and changing my life oh well thank you very much and uh, I'll be not just seeing you and Paulo tomorrow giving the class. I guess we got dinner tonight. So that's that's another big part of the of the Genesis function is is uh, having something good to eat in the process. So thank you for including me. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Awesome Masters podcast. And don't forget to check out our Facebook page each week on Tuesdays for new episodes of the show. I also want to encourage you to stop by the Ask the Masters Facebook page and invite other like-minded individuals to join us there as well. Feel free to jump into the conversations and even post your own questions. We want to create a community which fosters learning and discovery for the betterment of us all. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Please be sure to subscribe and feel free to share. 